what is happening team. So you may recall about a year ago, I shot a McLaren 650S in a car park with this guy. This is Oliver Lundy and we did some rolling rig shots and they looked a bit like this. Well, I say we, it was mostly him. <laughs> Today we're shooting a Ferrari 458 Spider, and we're going to do some regular shots, some detail shots and some rolling shots with me hanging out the back of a car window like a big wet dog. Yeah, so with rolling shots the whole point of it is to capture the motion of the car while it's moving and you want the background to be blurry and you want the wheels to be spinning in the shot but the car needs to stay sharp. There's two ways of doing it. You can either use a rig like we did with the McLaren or you can do it from one car to another and that's what we're going to do today. So let's start with a couple of detail shots like Oliver. Definitely gonna grab this famous Ferrari logo. Wow, that's a pretty cool flip top lid. Thousands of hours of designing went into that, I bet. Oliver with his 85 millimeter glass there. Beautiful cockpit. Let's use the door frame to frame the steering wheel. 85 millimeter as well. This rear quarter is iconic. Might need to do an exposure bracket here because of the high dynamic range of the scene. So let's go with one stop either side and we'll blend them together in post. Shooting through trees or bushes can make for some interesting fly on the wall type images. So Oliver, myself and Rich, who owns that beautiful beast, are going to head out and do some rolling shots now. Um, I've never attempted this before, so I'm open to the challenge and I'm also open to failure, which is very possible. Okay, my friend, let's do it. So I'm shooting on a 24 millimeter lens and we're gonna go with 80th of a second just to begin with and then we might have to tweak it and see how we go. Okay. Not using a seatbelt would help. Yeah. <laughs> I'm belt. putting a seatbelt on for safety. Okay. <laughs> it is like Top Gear in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, it's catching up. Okay, Rich, here we go. Now, I'm finding one of the most challenging aspects of shooting rolling sports car images like this is not only do you have your exposure triangle to think about, you also have the speed of the sports car 
and the speed of the support vehicle that you're shooting from. That last set of images, my shutter speed was 80th of a second, which was actually too fast. The road and the background didn't have enough motion blur to create that speed and that separation. Ideally, I wanted to be shooting around 40th or 50th of a second, which creates its own set of problems, which is camera shake, um, especially when you're shooting out of a moving vehicle and your lens is poking out of an open window, buffeting in the wind. Now, getting the driver of the sports car to keep the same speed as you is going to help with eliminating blurry images. Because we're shooting in the 40th to 50th of a second range, even slight differences in pace between the two cars is going to register as a blurry shot. So I guess the challenge you'll face is communication. We used a Bluetooth speaker in the car and kept a phone call connected the entire time. That way we could let the driver know when it was safe to overtake and when to slow down. Ferraris have a tendency to take off. Right, I'm gonna go down to 60th of a second and F3.5 or F4, I'm not sure. And uh, I'll set the ISO to about 200. I've also got a polarizer on here and a variable ND filter. Right, he's coming up now. Okay, do you want to go up to 60 miles an hour if we can? Flip out screen really helps. I can't quite reach the angle to shoot the shot. Okay, go for it, Rich. Having now shot both rig shots and rolling shots, what are the main differences between the two and which do I prefer? Well, the rig shots take about 40 minutes to an hour to set up and you obviously need to buy the expensive rig or you could hire one. Does it look good and is it sharp? Oh, it looks good. You'll also need a place to shoot where you won't be disturbed. You can't really do this on a regular street or road because you'll constantly have to move the car with the rig attached and that's a real pain in the neck. So empty car parks or private roads are your best option. Rolling shots can be done in more places as long as it's safe to do so. The downside of rolling shots is that you're limited to what your support vehicle will allow. The back window of an SUV will only give you a couple of angles, whereas a rig will give you a lot more options. Front on shots, lower angles, and those turning, drifting shots. Now, rolling shots, you need at least three people involved, where rig shots, you can get away with just one person, as long as you're strong enough to push a car on your own on a flat surface. Now I'd say both types of shots have a high level of difficulty and skill. One requires a steady hand, good focusing and steady drivers. The rig shots require much longer exposures and plenty of editing in post-production to content to wear out the camera rig. Now I guess the big concern is leaning out of the back of a car window could be considered questionable. Now you'll probably want to use a wrist strap which is something I didn't have and you'll also probably want to keep the camera mostly inside the car to stop the wind from buffeting the lens or pushing the flip out screen onto your hand which is something I was having trouble with. Because I was using spot focus the touch sensitive screen kept blowing onto my thumb and repositioning the focus point. It's a rookie mistake but hey mistakes are your greatest teacher right? So having had the experience of shooting both rolling shots and rig shots, I have to say I much prefer the exhilaration of grabbing an image in situation from car to car. It just feels more organic, more natural and a bigger payoff when you nail the focus and get the shot. Um, you'll want to use fast burst mode and just keep firing your shutter until your buffer fills up because you'll find a lot of the images will have some kind of camera shake or motion blur from the target vehicle. You'll only need one shot, so... So that's it my friends, I hope you enjoyed our little photo shoot with a Ferrari. Um, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for more juicy content and uh, I'll leave you with some more bangers from myself and Oliver Lundy. Check out his YouTube channel in the description below for everything automotive photography. I'll catch you next time.